Good morning, Saints. Good morning, good morning sinners. Good morning. It is so good to be gathered and worship together this morning. Welcome to North Shore. Welcome to all of you who are worshiping with us online. We're glad to have you worshiping with us today as we come into God's presence to remember who God is and to remember who we are and to celebrate our freedom in Christ. I invite all of you uh, to join me in prayer this morning. Loving God, we're grateful, so grateful to be able to gather in this space, to be able to gather and worship freely. We ask that you would pour out your spirit upon us, that we would leave distractions at the door, that we would offer our whole selves to you and allow you to meet us where we are today, that you would speak to where we are, help us know that you see us and that you know us and that you provide for us in your love for us. Bless our time of worship as we seek to bless you. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. As you're able to do so, I invite you to stand and join with me in our call to worship. We gather this day with glad and grateful hearts. Sing a song of praise to God for our country, for our world, We gather as ones whose ultimate freedom is found in Christ. And let us continue in our worship. I invite you to turn and uh, pass the peace of Christ with one another. Be mindful of one another's boundaries. make our way back to our seats for worship. Happy Independence Day. Let us celebrate through music and worshiping our Lord. Let's remember that this is a nation under God. You came to set the captives free. You came to set the captives free. You came to bring Your blood and my acceptance Now I'm alive to bring you praise Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom Every chain is broken Lord is there. 
Join me on the story steps, please. Have a seat. Hi, Stella. So today in Children's Church, we're going to be learning about Jonah. And a lot of the grown-ups probably know the story of Jonah. Um, it is a story of a prophet who God said, I want you to go talk to these people over here. But Jonah's like, I don't really want to do that. I don't like those people over there. I'm going to go over here. And he gets on a boat to go over here. And there's a storm. So you might think, oh, there's going to be a shipwreck. That's the end of Jonah. Then Jonah is thrown into the sea, and you think, that's definitely the end of Jonah. He's going to drown. But a whale <gasps> swallows him. And you think, well, finally, that's the end of the story. But while Jonah is in the whale... He prays to God. 
And that's like us. When we're at our lowest, when we're at our most depressed, we can pray to God even if our prayer is only a groan or a sigh. Sometimes we don't even have words that we can use to pray to God. So Jonah prays to God, and you know what? The whale barfs him out onto (laughs) dry land. So even when you're at the lowest, you too can become whale barf. (laughs) And pretty much from that moment, your life can only improve, right? Your sisters, that's fine. If she wants to be with her mom, that's fine. All right, so we are going to go, and we're going to learn about whales and and the things that they do, and um, that story in Children's Church today. Amen? I told Joe at the early service, I'm not really sure how I'm supposed to follow whale barf. I mean, I don't, I don't really know what to do with that. What to do with that? I don't know that I've ever heard it told quite that way, Joe. So thank you for um, something new, something new at North Shore. Every every day is a new day. That's right. Uh, as we enter into a, a time of uh, a time of wor- uh, prayer today, celebrating our joys and our concerns, I want to encourage you. If you're worshiping with us online, you can always email us uh, any prayer concerns that you have. We'd be delighted to pray with you and to pray for you. Uh, there's also a way for you to get the prayers of the people mail emailed to you every week. If you're not already signed up on that, you can go to our website and uh, find a way to sign up for that. Or Tiffany can help you do that. If you uh, <clears throat> don't, aren't sure how to do that, but certainly we add to our prayers uh, this week, prayers for Frank and his family. He, oh, thank you, Frank, for doing sound back there uh, on the death of his stepmother, uh, Karen. Services are Wednesday this week, so prayers for them and all the family and uh, that they would find comfort in this, this time of sorrow. Uh, Sissy Dowden is here, and we continue to pray for you, Sissy, and uh, prayers as we prepare to celebrate Rex's life on Saturday at 10.30 uh, here in this space. And so we want to continue to offer those prayers for you. Prayers for those who are recovering from um, injury and illness, for Susan Harris, who is is here somewhere. I saw her as well. And uh, for Vicki Johnson as well. And those who are serving in the military, Tommy Jordan is recently deployed with the National Guard. And so we want to keep uh, Tommy and all of our military families in our prayers. And then a prayer of celebration. Carol Bryant let me know today they're celebrating the birth of their great-grandson who was born on July 1st. And so we're uh, glad that we have new life among us as we continue in this time of prayer. I invite you in this moment of, of silence to just take a deep breath, to offer yourself, your heart, whatever's on your heart and mind, offer it to God, and then I'll pray for us as well. Let's, let's pray. Loving God, when we come into your presence, we bring our whole selves and you ask nothing less from us than everything that we have, all the joys that we have and all the things we celebrate, as well as all of the things that break our hearts and weigh us down, that you invite us to offer it all to you, that your love is wide enough and deep enough to carry it, that your care and compassion for us receives us right where we are. And so as we offer ourselves to you, we pray that you would help us feel that release of those burdens, and that you would help us know your peace in the midst of whatever we are carrying with us. Today, gracious God, as we celebrate the birth of our nation, we remember with gratitude those who have gone before us, those who make it possible for us to celebrate who we are as a nation, for the freedom in which we live, the freedom that we have that so many around the world do not have, including the freedom to gather and worship you. We pray for those who remain not free, that by your spirit you would break into those those places, whether it is a a freedom in body, mind, or spirit, whether it's not being free because of geography or place in life, that by your spirit, you would find a way to set them free, to provide healing and hope 
to all of us. And we pray even now for those who over all these years have served to defend our freedom and those who are serving now in our military and those who are serving our nation in other ways, but on the front lines of defending our freedom so that we continue to live in this space, to live and move and, and breathe as a, a people, understanding that we belong to you and we need you. And we pray for all of the families of those who are serving our nation, the families who are making sacrifices that most of us cannot begin to comprehend, that you would surround them with your care and with your compassion and that you would keep us mindful that they are serving too. Lord, we pray for your guidance as we continue to learn how to live together as a country made up of people with many differences, different nationalities, different experiences, different lives. And we pray for wisdom to live as good stewards of the land and the ecosystems that make up our nation. Lord, we pray for peace in our homes, in our communities, in our nation, and in the world. And we don't just pray for peace, but we pray for courage to be peacemakers. We pray for healing in body, mind, and spirit for those who are suffering in any way, for those who are broken, whether it's in body, mind, or spirit, that you would provide healing and wholeness for them. We pray for relationships that are broken, that you would also by your spirit bring restoration and reconciliation, that you would allow us to receive your mercy and to offer your mercy to one another. Strengthen us for the journey that is ours. Help us to be gracious and compassionate with one another and help us, Lord, not to take our freedom for granted. Even as we celebrate the freedom we have in this nation, we pray that we would remember as ones who belong to you, as ones who are followers of Christ, that our greatest freedom is found in Christ who gave himself for us. In that freedom and in that knowledge, we pray today, as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Happy 4th of July to you guys. Happy 4th of July. It's good to be able to gather freely and to worship together. Do any of you know why there aren't any knock-knock jokes about America and the 4th of July? Because freedom rings. <clears throat> and here's one more. I can't believe my youngest son is not here to hear these jokes. He's the jokester in our family. On the way, Remind me, Daniel, on the way home to, to run these by him. Uh, I didn't tell him ahead of time because if he was here, he would yell out the answer and kind of ruin the whole thing. Uh, do you know what the most popular dance was in 1776? Independent dance. I know, I know. That's it. That's all I got. Today, we celebrate the 4th of July. We saw, I know all the eyes rolling in the, whole, in the whole room. I felt the building shift as the eyes as the eyes rolled. Today we celebrate 4th of July, Independence Day. It's always interesting, I think, for us as people of faith. Uh, our independence as citizens of the United States of America juxtaposed with our dependence on God and our interdependence on one another. As, as citizens of the kingdom of God, we live in this world, but we're not of this world. We celebrate our freedom as Americans, but we also know that we are completely dependent upon God in this culture that celebrates freedom and independence, the paradox for us is that we are the most free when we are deeply connected to God and to one another. We're the most free, not in our independence, but in our dependence on God and our interdependence 
on one another. I wonder what living in that paradox looks like for you. I invite you today, all day, as we celebrate our freedom, I invite you to consider how that feels or how you experience that. As we prepare to hear God's word, let us pray. Almighty God, I pray that you would open our ears to hear and our hearts to receive your word to us today. And I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts would be pleasing and acceptable to you, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I remember my maternal grandfather telling me, I must have been about nine or ten years old, and he said to me, you are one of the most independent people that I know. Here's my grandfather, this big man, this farmer, cotton farmer, and uh, very independent himself, telling me that I was one of the most independent people he knew. I took it as a badge of honor. I mean, that was a compliment for me. And then I set it as a mark to shoot for, as a goal to aim for, that I, I didn't need other people. I could take care of myself. I could do things on my own. I took pride in not needing other people. The trouble is that that badge of honor eventually became more of an armor of isolation. Maybe I didn't need other people, but my determination to be independent kept me from experiencing the fullness of life that God intends for us. It it kept me from from living in, in the fullness of relationship that God intends with God and with one another. Today, we celebrate Independence Day, a a day our nation declared its independence from Great Britain 245 years ago. Quite the achievement, quite the badge of honor, that achieving independence. But I I wonder, um, even though we can't really imagine what our lives would be like without that declaration of independence, I, I wonder how that national badge of honor has evolved over time into an excuse of sorts for an arrogant individualism and thinking that we can do do whatever we want whenever we want it, regardless of cost or consequences to ourselves or to one another. I wonder some days if we have forgotten that our independence as a nation does not supersede our dependence on our creator. Are we really, as a nation, experiencing the fullness of what it means that we are created in the image of God, that we're intended to be in relationship with God and with one another? Or are are we missing out on that fullness because we're more concerned most days about what's in it for me? There are many scriptures uh, that talk about how we are to live in relationship with God and with one another. Scriptures that talk about how we are one body, how we're the family of God. We are united by the fact that we are all human beings. As Christians, we are united further by what Jesus has done for us, making us brothers and sisters in Christ, none better or more important than another. There's two scriptures that I want to share with you today. First comes from Romans. Paul's letter, they both come from the Apostle Paul. The first is from Romans 12, verses 3 to 5. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. And Paul writes to the Corinthians, his first letter in chapter 12, For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Scripture really couldn't be clearer that we're connected. We belong to one another. We need one another. And yet we live in a culture in which we struggle with this. We live in a culture that prides itself on independence and individual achievement, pursuing the American dream, a culture that, uh, that promotes um, 
importance based on your position in the culture or how much power you have in the culture. A culture that sets us up really to, to be us and them, a culture that insidiously elevates competition over collaboration or cooperation, where there are winners and losers, there are haves and have nots, and one side is usually clearly seen as better than the other. A society in which we are fearful and suspicious of one another, of anyone who is different from us. Often we're worried, if we're honest, that somebody else might get what we think we deserve. As citizens of the United States of America, we are so divided and subdivided and subdivided into categories of thought and opinions and belief. We're so divided that we begin to think and believe that unity means that you agree with me or that you look like me or that you think like me. You know, it's likely that we wouldn't even be able to agree, agree on what the best flavor of ice cream is, right? How many of you think vanilla is the best flavor? Okay, how many of you think chocolate's the best flavor? Any strawberry takers? There's strawberry. And for some of you, I haven't even named what you think is the best flavor. And some of you are gonna say, you know, I don't care, I don't even like ice cream. <laughs> and if that's the case, we should talk after worship. Because I don't I really don't get I really don't get that. Ice cream is one thing. Ice cream is one thing. Even if we don't agree on the best flavor, we can still eat ice cream together, right? You can have strawberry ice cream. I don't care. Let's eat together though. Let's enjoy ice cream together. But when it comes to more substantive issues, we find it harder, don't we? to share space with one another, to make room for one another, to have conversation even. It's not bad to have differences of thought and differences of opinion. Differences can actually generate good conversation and dialogue. Differences can help us see our own blind spots and our own places where we need to grow. Our differences can help us to see one another as ones who are loved by God. So it's not that the differences are bad. The problems emerge when we allow those differences to become weapons that divide us or weapons that we use to demonize one another or or weapons or or reasons that we actually um, use to keep ourselves blind to our own shortcomings. When the differences become a means of exclusion rather than invitation to communion. In April, I did a memorial service for my friend Connie. Connie was one of my biggest cheerleaders and encouragers and prayer warriors at Bethany. Uh, There were a lot of things different about Connie and me. There were a lot of things that we did not agree on. I think if we probably had, had gone to the voting polls together, we would have had completely opposite ballots when it came to um, how we voted but there was one thing we always agreed on. That was Jesus, always. And Connie and I had this mutual respect for one another. Knowing that we didn't agree with one another about a lot of things, we always kept Jesus in the center of who we were. And we had a deep love for one another and a deep respect. I let Connie use, Connie became like iron sharpening iron for me. My goal was to be made more like Christ, and sometimes it was Connie and the differences that we had that helped me grow in my relationship with Jesus. Connie and I recognized our need, our individual need for Jesus, and that allowed us to make all kinds of room for one another. You know, when I watch the news, um, it almost always leads with tragedy and violence. My husband, who's a journalist, says, yeah, because if it bleeds, it leads. Right? That's what gets people in, it gets people hooked. We're, we're somehow drawn to that brokenness and, and the tragedy. But when I watch the news, that almost always leads with tragedy and violence. And when I look around, and even though we've, we've come so far with regard to racial, the racial tensions, they're, they're still there and they, they still pop up and there's still an undercurrent in our world. And you know, when social injustices, when they provoke this highly charged rhetoric void of any action, and and then when our media, social media especially, targets and exposes the worst in us and really pits us against each other, we become more isolated 
through this media that's supposed to bring us together. And, you know, when political and theological divisiveness actually tear relationships apart and wound, deeply wound, the body of Christ, it, it makes me wonder what the world would look like if we who say we are free in Christ, if we who say we follow Jesus, what would the world look like if we remembered and believed and actually then lived as one to understand that each of us belongs to God and that we need one another? There's a risk in living that way, for sure, because we might get hurt, we might be misunderstood, we might not get what we want, we might actually be challenged in our own thinking and our own biases, and we might just realize that we really do need others, and others need us. Living in this culture as ones who belong to God and to one another is rarely convenient or easy. But it is always where our greatest freedom is found because it is where Christ always is. I love this quote from St. Teresa. If we have no peace, it is because we have forgotten that we belong to each other. If we have no peace, and think about the world in which we live, it is because we have forgotten that we belong to each other. It's what the Apostle Paul knows as well. Not just a peace that is tranquility, but also the peace that the people of God know as shalom. That Hebrew word that means peace, but it's more than, than tranquility. It is a, a wholeness. It is a well-being for those of us who abide in Christ, who know God and it's evidenced when we know that though we are many, as Paul writes, we are one body in Christ. We need God, and we need one another, even when we celebrate independence in our nation. We need to remember our dependence on God. Our founding fathers who wrote the Declaration of Independence as well contributed to that. They also knew this. This is the last line of the Declaration of Independence. And for the support of this declaration, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. The patriots who signed the Declaration of Independence knew two things for sure. They depended on God, and they were committed to depending on one another. For many people, the 4th of July is all about allowing Every American to do whatever every American wants to do, right? Being the rugged individual, pursuing the American dream, forgetting that Independence Day is about the independence of a nation, not of a bunch of people looking out for their own individual interests. The founders of our nation knew that you couldn't have a declaration of independence without a corresponding declaration of dependence on God and on one another. As people of faith, we are never meant to be independent from God or one another. Even from the very beginning, we're created in God's image to be in relationship with God, with one another, with all of creation. In Exodus, when God sets the Hebrew people free using Moses to lead them out of slavery, he doesn't set them free just to be whoever they want to be and do whatever they want to do. He sets them free to be his people. I will be your God and you will be my people. And he gives them guidelines for how to live in community with one another, honoring God, honoring one another. And we who live in this covenant relationship with God and Christ, we who lived chained to our own humanity, longing for freedom that God offers to us. God comes to us in Christ, the word made flesh, God with us, Emmanuel, to set us free, not to be on our own, but to live fully in relationship with God and with one another. I don't think we can escape the tension that we live in in this culture, this culture that prizes independence and self-promotion and relationships that benefit us, the tension in that culture and the kingdom of God that praises and celebrates a dependence on God 
and a primary allegiance to Jesus Christ as our Lord, where we belong by design to one another. Our hope and our strength for living in this tension comes from Jesus in whom we find our real freedom. I appreciated that song so much at the beginning. I'm free. I'm free in Christ. I am free. And friends, as we live in that freedom, the world around us begins to change and the peace that we all long for becomes more and more possible as we who are free in Christ actually allow that to influence how we live in this culture and in this world. As we come to the table today, as we come to God's table today, I don't have any ice cream for you, but I have something better. I have the bread of life. I have the cup of salvation that Jesus offers to us, and I have a place for you to remember that you belong to God, to remember that we belong to one another. And as you come to the table, I invite you to imagine, to think about who it is that might be missing from your own table. Is there someone who needs you in the freedom that you have in Christ to extend a hand of mercy or forgiveness? to invite them to the table with you? Who's missing from from our table? Who needs us as ones who have found freedom in Christ to invite others into that same experience of freedom, not to be on our own, but to live fully in relationship dependent on God, dependent, interdependent with one another? As we come to the table, I invite you just to consider. Consider the place where you belong. Consider who it is that is not yet here. Let all the people say amen. I invite you as we prepare to receive the gift of the sacrament today, I invite you into a moment of silent confession. One of my clergy colleagues used to say that coming to communion without confession is like coming to the dinner table without washing your hands. And after Joe's children's time today, we're going to wash our hands, all right? I invite you to a moment of silent confession. Brothers and sisters in Christ, hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were still sinners, proving God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are all forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. I invite you to join me as you're able in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, O God, who with your word and Holy Spirit created all things and called them good. In Jesus Christ, your word became flesh and dwelt among us. Through Jesus' suffering and death, you took upon yourself our sin and death and destroyed their power forever. You raised from the dead this same Jesus, who now reigns with you in glory, and poured upon us your Holy Spirit, making us the people of your new covenant. On the night before meeting with death, Jesus took the bread and gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, and again he gave you thanks. And he gave the cup to his disciples, said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant. My blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink of this, do so in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine that they may be for us the body of Christ, the blood of Christ, that we may know the presence of the living Christ and be renewed as the body of Christ for the world, redeemed by Christ's blood until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at your table forever. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. The ushers will give you some direction. Joe, will you come help me serve the bread? We'll have two lines that come. We'll serve you the bread, and then uh, the juice is on the table. If you need gluten-free elements, they're on the tables as well, the wafers that are on the tables. All of the juice is gluten-free. We've got gluten-free juice for you today.
there are also gluten-free wafers for you. If you um, want to uh, bring a, an offering to the communion rail today, I invite you to do so. Today's communion rail offering goes to support our youth ministries. We uh, bring them in and offer Christ to them, and then we send them out to offer Christ to the world. And so if you feel compelled to be generous and offering yourself to support our students, our youth, you can leave an offering in the, the basket at the end of the communion table. So I invite you to come and receive the body of Christ and the blood of Christ given for you.
Loving God, we're so grateful for this meal in which you have fed us and nourished us. And we pray that as we've received your grace, as we've received the, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, that we would courageously and boldly offer it to the world. And that you would help us live in the freedom that is ours in Christ, inviting others into that freedom that is relationship with you and with one another. By your spirit, make us one. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. As we have received the gifts that God has offered to us, I invite you now as the ushers come forward to offer yourself and your tithes and your offerings as generously as you are able as God has been generous with you. Through you the blind will see are free to eat whatever flavor of ice cream you like best. A couple of reminders, the church office is closed tomorrow in observance of the holiday, and so I invite you, uh, Tiffany will be uh, checking messages and emails on Tuesday morning, because she's taking the day off tomorrow as well, and so I encourage you, if you need something, to email or call, and we'll take care of you, and you, as a body of Christ, are taking care of one another, and that's the best way it should be. Um, I will be in the office on Wednesday this week. Uh, just to remind you, we are still closing on our house in Cedar Park this week, hopefully closing on our house here on the 12th, and then moving all of our stuff here. So we will be glad to have everything in one place. And um, so thank you in advance uh, for your patience with us as we... Uh, get everything together and get transitioned down here. Another, one more reminder, if you didn't sign in on your way in, if you could do that on your way out, it really helps me 
to start putting names and faces together to know who's here, but it helps us in the church office as well to know that you are here. So if you wouldn't mind uh, making sure you have signed in today, we really appreciate knowing that you are here with us. As you go out from this place, from this time of worship, my prayer is that your life will be a life of worship, an act of worship, and how you honor God in your thoughts and your words and your actions, how you remember your dependence upon God and your interdependence with one another. We are many and we are one, and we have become one in Christ. So I encourage you to remember that especially when someone confronts you with a difference of opinion or a different idea. Remember who you are. Remember who they are. Remember who God calls us to be for one another. Go in the love of God and the peace of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I am free to run. I am free. I am free to dance. I am free to live for you. I am free to live for you. I am free. I am free. I am free to run. I am free to run. I am free to dance. I am free to dance. I am free to live for you. I am free to live for you. 